In this video, we will be discussing the different ways in which you can open files and save them in Emacs. When you open a file in Emacs, Emacs creates a buffer of memory. It then copies the contents of the file into the buffer and displays the buffer for editing. This process is called visiting a file. After visiting a file, if you make any changes to the buffer, the mode line will always display a star to indicate that the contents of the buffer now differ from the contents of the file. This is known as the buffer being modified. In order to make any modifications you have made to the buffer permanent, you need to save it. Unless you save the buffer, it will only exist within Emacs, or depending on how you set up your backup settings, in a backup file. An unmodified buffer will also be reflected in the mode line. Before moving on to the main method of opening files in Emacs, which is to use the find file command, let's discuss some quick alternative ways of doing the same thing. One way to open a file in Emacs is to simply drag and drop the file from your file explorer into an open Emacs session. I'm on Windows so I can drag the file from Windows Explorer, but if you're on a Mac it would work from the finder, and if you're on Linux it would work from your file explorer too. Another way of opening a file in Emacs is to associate the file extensions of the types of file you would like to open in Emacs with the Emacs program. Once you've done that, you can just double click the file and it will open in Emacs. If you're doing this on Windows, be sure to associate the file extension with the run emacs.exe file rather than the plain emacs.exe file. Another alternative way of opening a file in Emacs is to use the menu bar from an already opened Emacs session to click on File, Open File and then navigate to the file and choose to open it. You could also alternatively click on the Open File icon on the toolbar to open up the same dialog box. All three methods are convenient ways in which you can open a file in Emacs, but the main method is to use the Find File command. The Find File command is bound to the key sequence Control X, Control F and is the main method used by most people to open up files in Emacs. Typing the key sequence results in a prompt appearing in the mini buffer, asking you to enter the path to the file you want to open. As long as the cursor is in the mini buffer, you can type Ctrl G at any time to exit the prompt. When you are at the prompt in the mini buffer, having to type out each character of the path for the file would be extremely tedious. If I wanted to open a file which is buried three folders deep from the C drive, I can delete the path that Emacs has presented me up to the point where it includes the C colon. Then I can press tab to see the options available to me. You may need to press the tab button twice for autocomplete to work when the list is not unique. I only need to type out as many characters that are required to uniquely identify which folder it is and then I can press tab to autocomplete. For example, I can type F and press tab and since folder 1 is the only folder beginning with F, it will autocomplete to folder 1. I can then use the same methodology to aid me in auto-completing to reach the final file path that I actually want. Before we open the file, I should mention a word about paths. On Emacs, on Windows, you can provide a path which includes forward and or backslashes, and everything will usually just work. But on Unix or Linux, only the forward slash works. Since the forward slash works on all operating systems and it's used by Emacs by default, you should just stick to always using that, even on Windows. Once you have the correct path for your file in the mini buffer, you can press return to open it. With an open buffer, when you run the find file command by typing Control X, Control F, the starting point of the path will then be from the directory the file is in. You can see this clearly in the mini buffer. Another convenient way of seeing where the directory that contains the file that corresponds to the buffer you are editing is located is to run the meta x pwd command to display it. It's important to know some of the shortcuts you can use to enter the path of the file you want to open, so that you can save time. Firstly, you can use the tilde character followed by a slash anywhere within a path and Emacs will take it to mean you want to start from the user's home directory. For example, here you can see that when I tab through to show the autocomplete options after typing tilde and forward slash, the contents of the user's home directory is shown. This functionality works the same across Windows, Linux and Mac. To find out more about the tilde character and how you can customise the path it refers to on Windows, check out my other video on the subject. Another useful time saving tip to know is that you can start entering a new path beginning from the root of your file system from anywhere within an existing path by entering a shorthand. On a Unix or Linux machine, you can do this by entering two slashes. This effectively makes Emacs ignore everything before the second slash. You can see this for yourself by typing two slashes and tabbing for auto-completion and then seeing the Emacs completion buffer show the directories and files that exist underneath the root of the file system. 
On Windows, I have found that using the double slash shorthand may result in issues. Sometimes it works, especially if you have certain Windows software such as Sigwin installed, but other times it does not. The way to achieve the same thing on Windows would be to type the drive letter which you want, which will most likely be C, followed by a colon and a slash. You can see here that when this is done and tab is pressed, the Emacs autocomplete functionality works just fine. There are a few other important things about the find file command that you should know. If you choose to open the path leading to a directory rather than a file, Emacs will open up a dured buffer for that directory. This is essentially a directory listing which you could use to navigate around as well. The single dot represents the current directory and the double dot represents the parent directory. You can navigate around in a dured buffer by moving the cursor over the relevant line entry and then open the file or the directory by pressing return. Dured buffers will be covered in much more detail in a future video. Another thing that you should know about the find file command is that if you give it a path to a file which does not exist, then Emacs will create a buffer named after that file. When you make changes and save the buffer, the file will be written to disk. If you also included directories in the path of that file that did not exist on your actual file system, you will be prompted whether you want to create those as well. Of course, you will need to answer yes for the file to be saved. Any text that you insert into an Emacs buffer is lost if you do not save it. Until you save it, the changed text exists only inside Emacs or in backups that Emacs takes. Saving files is extremely simple in Emacs. The graphical way of saving would be to click File and then Save. There is also the Save As button, which will allow you to save the contents of the buffer in a different file to the one that was originally visited. These two commands are given the key bindings Control X, Control S, and Control X, Control W, respectively. That's it. You now understand the different ways in which you can open up files in Emacs and how you can save your changes. If you want to see more helpful tips and tricks on Emacs, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.